Good morning everyone. Hello. Welcome to this week's episode. We are in Terengganu in Malaysia and we arrived a couple of days ago. We have been here to clear into Malaysia. That was our primary purpose in coming here. It's actually a very comfortable anchorage inside the breakwater. No problems at all. We cleared in yesterday with an agent and then Nick, bless him, had to go on this like nighttime adventure to try and get some fuel for our tanks. Going under that bridge, like literally surfing. Like if this boat turns sideways, I'm f and the dinghy is just doing this against this metal jetty. And I'm like, well, I'm f this is it. We're, I'm gonna lose the f dinghy. Get in the car, blah, blah, blah. Turn up at petrol station. They're like, no, no, we can't serve you. You've got 20 litre cans, we only fill five litres. Went to the second petrol station. No, we don't have diesel. Third petrol station, we don't have diesel. Fourth petrol station, you found the shell. We're now like 10 miles out of town, right? Because you can only have 20 litres. The new government orders come through. And I'm like, f***ing how? Like, I need like 500 litres. Yeah, that was traumatising for him. And if you want to hear the whole story, you're going to have to watch last week's episode. But today we are heading to a nearby island, which is literally eight miles away, because we don't want to quite leave for Tim and Island yet, um, because we just want to have a day of resting. But we also would like to be doing that, uh, anchored off some island on a beach somewhere. So we're going to head over there spend the night there and then we're cracking on to Tiamen in the morning but for today hopefully a nice little island holiday um, on our trip towards Phuket. I'm Teresa this is Nick and this is Ruby Rose 2 our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. We've only got about eight miles and you might be able to see the island behind me here somewhere. And uh, yeah, not a breath of wind. Beautiful, calm sea state and uh, today I mean I wanted today to be kind of a nice calm day of just relaxing swimming off the boat perhaps going ashore and having a meal maybe going for a little walk and hopefully all those things will still happen but Nick has discovered this morning that the ice machine has packed up again you might recall from a few episodes ago that um, when we we're in Pattaya one of the several things that delayed us from leaving was the fact that the ice machine stopped working and we were waiting for a part to be delivered from Italy uh, it's a Vitfrigo Vita, Vita unit Phil contacted them and said this is what I think the problem is and they just turned around straight away and said no problem we'll send out a replacement part don't know what part it was we fitted that or rather Nick Nick fitted that but I'll get Nick to explain but I don't think that um, that was actually the problem at all I think that once again, it is gunk and shit and crap and debris in our water system, which has been the bane of our life. It's uh, been blocking up all our filters, our freshwater pump filter, our washing machine filter. Everything just seems to stop working because the filters are all blocked up because of all this crap. And I don't know where it all came from. I'm not going to go there but um, it's like debris, it's like all just shit. And algae, the algae is our fault, but the rest of the shit, and you can see it in the filter, is, um, is something else. So anyway, that's, that's what's causing us a lot of issues at the moment. However, of course, a broken ice machine is hardly the end of the world. So um, yeah, if that's kind of our biggest problem right now, then we're doing fairly well. All right, we're only about four and a half miles away. Uh, from an island called Capas and this island isn't in the cruising guide it's not anywhere <laughs> uh, but our friends said that they stayed here uh, for a night or two and they highly recommended it hoping that we can find a good little spot to anchor um, out of this swell and that's where we'll be set for spending tonight are you okay? yeah I need to run the water my love okay. just want to see if it right yeah. fires out here the first time since we set off we have a little island anchorage yeah. we are checked into Malaysia and we 
of this beautiful liner, which is 10 nautical miles uh, south of Terengganu. I think we have been blocked um, solenoid in our ice machine. So I need to try and take that apart because I can't stop it dripping and there's no isolation valve. I can't stop the water flow to the ice machine. So it's continually dripping into the ice tray, which is then kind of flooding everything and causing a big block of ice. Even with the ice machine switched off, the solenoid is jammed open and I kind of think we've got contaminants in that tank. That's the... What's that, the arrival? Or the water maker? What does it... What did it say? Is it clear faults if we start over? Yeah, correct. It's very calm here, so literally anywhere where we've got like the correct depth, I think is fine. Over. I don't think we can get much closer because of those nets. Over. I agree. I think we're going to have to anchor like in, you know, nine meters or so. Over. I think turn a little bit to starboard and go like more in front of the jetty. Over. This looks like it's going to shove out far better than where we were. So um, let's just head this way. Over. Yep, I agree. The watercolour looks a little bit lighter, so I think that it's probably better. Over. Okay, we're down to seven metres now and it's still shelving, so I should be at six in about 15 metres of time, so I propose to do it about there. I agree. I think that this is a good spot. Over. I'm just going to uh, get the boat head to wind and I'm going to drop the anchor. Okay, the water looks very clear, so I should be able to see it pretty well. Over. Anything that you can see? Looks like sand. Over might actually be able to see how the anchor sits for once. We've uh, not had clear water for ever. Okay, well, at least uh, that's gone well. We'll have a little dive on the anchor later. Um, Nick needs to go into the hull anyway to look at our props, make sure that they're all hunky-dory. But I think the first thing that he'll want to do is try and get our water maker sorted. But at least we are in an absolutely beautiful place to do all that. Wow. Gorgeous. Thanks Ollie and Dave for the recommendation. Would have sailed straight past this island. Yeah, how nice is this? So this is pleasant, isn't it? Isn't it pleasant? However, our water maker has just gone up the fritz again so I've got to fix it so boating is about fixing things in exotic places however because Phil Harper is the man genius uncle that he is he kind of said I don't like this part it needs to be replaced and essentially there are two hoses that are being held together with a piece of metal tubing and before we left he handed me this he's like these are two bronze or brass barbed fittings for 15 mil hose this needs to be changed out at some point so I will show you what the problem is and then we will go and fix it. And if that gets the water maker running, I then just have the ice machine to work out. <laughs> All right, into my locker, my shed. These two hoses were connected by this piece of tubing. Anyway, time for me to fix this. 60, 10, 9, 8, 7, 8, 5, 4, f hell. Come on, you look, come on, girl. Come on, come on the 250. I think it actually waits a minute before anyway. I think it's like two, it gets to drop below 250 and then or a minute. I think both have to be observed and I need to go and check the fitting as well. There you go. There we go. And the sound of a Another job done. looking really good oh okay is there any rope or anything around them are you okay i know i i got stung on the legs are you okay so the props are all clear yeah props are clear okay you can see i've already been in the water you missed the first take because i was filming it for my three-year-old niece i wanted to show her a little video of me jumping into the water because she's obsessed with moana and uh, she just loves the fact that me and uncle nikki live on a boat and we're sailing to an island 
and she also is a little bit scared of the water herself so I just wanted to show her a shot of me jumping into the water and having a swim. Okay, take two. Oh, how nice is this? So refreshing. We are going to just have an afternoon of relaxing on board and need to get some work done. Nick probably has some jobs to do, but mainly we're just gonna try and get some chill time and enjoy the rest of the day. All right, I now just have the ice machine to fix. And this is not a first world problem. It's literally, I can't stop the water. There's no isolation valve and it's dripping. So I need to get that done. Uh, Therese, what are you doing, love? I'm trying to get this week's episode out. I'm already a day late. Sorry, patrons. Um, and we're sailing, we're doing a 24 hour offshore passage tomorrow. So I have no idea when I'm gonna get this out to you. So we have this, which is editing, this view. It is half past four, by half past six, we're gonna be in a bar. I, stripping this down, it's this piece of, it's an old cable for something. I wanted a two core cable, which I've taken from an old lead. I have the solenoid for the ice machine, which I believe is blocked, but it closes. So I need to hot wire this, but hot wire this solenoid across the battery from the dinghy that's a 12 volt battery and if that gets screwed at least we can it won't get screwed but like i said i just want to get this hot wired so that we can uh, try and get this clean so that's what i'm up to now uh, so yeah i'll hot wire this across these two terminals i just want to try and blow any crap out and then take it back from there okay back in a bit Whenever you're ready. I literally just hot wired the solenoid so that uh, it opens. The natural position is to be in a shut position. Okay. And so what I would say is that the solenoid is closed now. And what normally happens is regarding this, the fridge will have to come up to temp down to temperature. Yeah. It's down to temperature. The solenoid will open. Well, it is, there's, there's water already in the tray. Yeah. Um, so once that's frozen, it will let water in. But what I would say to you is, looking at this little pipe that's in here, it was just dripping repetitively and it's not anymore. So it's a solenoid and electric component. Yeah, yeah. So a solenoid is essentially, it's a, like a, Think of it like an on and off switch, right? So if you put power across it, it opens. And if you put power, if you take the power off, it closes. It's literally like a little, like electronic gate, right? So what happens is there's a CPU in here. The CPU says, I need water. And then what happens is it fills up, it opens a solenoid until a specific amount of water is put into the ice cube tray. And then it closes again. So it lets a bit of water in and closes it. Lets a bit of water in and closes it. The problem is that what happened was that the, that solenoid, it's a valve, but it's not closing. It just wouldn't close, which basically meant that it's a drip. And the drip was actually a lot more than I thought it was, which is why I was going to leave this for another day. But I'm like, you know, we're losing. We're literally putting about a litre of water into that an hour, yeah. which apart from the fact that it cycles the pump, it's not good for the whole thing. And there's water. This isn't a watertight unit yeah. so there's water dripping down and there's a you know electrical components there yeah. now there's no inline isolation valve so i can't close it off the only thing i could do is literally just get a glue gun and seal up the end mm -hmm. and then that's broken anyway so taking the solenoid putting it across the battery terminal for the boat for the little boat it's a 12 volt solenoid right it's a 12 volt fridge the car the battery is a 12 volt supply and the reason i use that battery rather than the engine start battery is that if i anything up and short anything i haven't damaged the engine start battery think of it this way if you open a gate yeah. yeah to a field and you get something stuck in the gate and the gate won't close right you can't clear the obstacle in the gate without opening it again yeah. do you have to basically open the gate and let the let the obstruction out and then let it close naturally 
Was there a physical obstruction? I don't know. We're talking about something on a microscopic level that I can't see, and it's a tiny black hole that I can't see. So all I did was manually, well, electrically force the solenoid to open using the boat battery, just blew through it a few times so that anything in there is just dislodged. So it's literally just, okay, this is the obstruction. It, it takes me now, I mean, I've done this, I've taken this ice machine apart like twice now. I can get this apart and back together in about 20 minutes. It's not a big problem probably an hour if I'm just like doing it slower and in a more controlled manner but I want to stop now I'm filthy I've got a burn across my hand it's okay it's my fault I isolated the battery and then didn't realize that the isolation occurred after the terminals which is just me being a dickhead okay I was going to give up work for the day but I've kind of been inspired to start something else our patron group right we hive mind hive minded and minded hive hive minded so Thank you to Rob Hoosman, actually, who was, uh, came up with this idea. Uh, the contamination in our water tank. What he said is, filter it. You did this in Barcelona with your fuel, build a polishing system. So Rob, well done you. It kind of triggered off a whole series of events and the patron group are like, okay, yeah, build it. So what have I got? I have, um, this is an emergency bodge, by the way. So I have um, a spare filter housing for the water maker. They gave me a spare housing and I've also got a random bag of plumbing components. Now this water is not pressurized. This system isn't pressurized. But what I do have is this. It is just, it's a elbow joint here. I mean that is half inch to a 15 mil pipe. Now I can connect a hose pipe to this. The problem is, this is three quarters of an inch. So um, this is something actually, if you have a boat, I really think you should have one of these, just a basic children's glue gun or a craft glue gun, because actually in a fix, you can fill any hole with glue and it will set and it's safe and you leave it for a couple of hours. And essentially that is, or should be, it should be enough to take a low pressure system. So I'm going to bond these two in, one in and one out. I am going to then heat the hoses up. I'm going to cut another length of our freshwater hose off. I'm going to buy another hose. I've got through so much of it. Put two connectors there. And then this one is going to come from, this is going to be a connector to our fresh water deck flush. So the deck water fresh water deck flush is going to go through here this is going to be a spare carbon filter and it's going to come out on a very short length of hose back into our water tank that's the plan we will see how it goes i will report back but we need to get this water of ours filtered that's the plan i will let this set um i think we were going to be in a marina in about 24 hours but and i don't think this is prudent to do this until we're in a marina so but I want everything built and at least tested. So that's where we are. Anyway, I'll get on with this while my glue gun drips onto my work surface and I'll be back with you again soon. Catch up in a bit. I think that it will be okay. Look at our lovely boat just sitting there happily. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Malaysia. So as with the Waltons, where the end of every episode is good night, John, good night, whoever. A lot of our episodes end with us going for a beer. Yes. <laughs> where are we? It looks very closed down at the moment. Yeah, I think there's only a small chance we're actually going to be able to find anything open. That being said, we saw people on the beach before, so they're obviously staying at some of these resorts. So hopefully there's a restaurant open. We'll find something. Fingers crossed. I would say there's a lot of trash. There's more trash here than there was in Thailand. Yeah. Water. It's a bar, yeah. All right, well, let's try that. We found ourselves a nice little spot for a beer. This is lovely. And, uh, oh, it's been a good day, hasn't it? I feel like I've spent the entire day doing maintenance jobs. Okay. Yeah, I do. That's true. Like, literally, I've had a go freeze the fridge. Uh, the ice maker, I'm not sure if that's working. I've defrosted the fridge. I've tried to build a water filter, which is still set. I've fixed the water maker and sailed this boat out of here. So yeah, it's been 
big day for me. Big day. And for you as well. You've been editing. Yeah, I have. I mean, that's the kind of vague distribution of labour, isn't it? Yeah. Keep the boat fixed and you keep the channel running. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair well, it's what divide you, of labour, yeah. Well, it is, I mean, you know, we can Has stop to be done. Us, but it will just get, you know, be a bloody... Pain Very inefficient, yeah. Exactly. No, all good. I mean, you know, at least we've had a beautiful place to do all that work. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We've just got a lovely little outlook in front of us of the beautiful beach and it's just very, very lovely. If you guys are enjoying watching us sailing around this part of the world, then uh, please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate every subscription and it really does help our channel. That's why we keep banging on about it all the time. Now leave us a comment down below and we'll see you next week for more sailing in Malaysia. We'll be doing an overnight sail to an island called Tiaman Island, which is supposed to be absolutely beautiful. And I'm really excited about it. So yeah, we are continuing on our mission to get to Phuket ASAP and we're taking you guys along for the ride. So subscribe if that all sounds like fun and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.